Hi, we're here at Mohican Lodge in Ohio, where it brings back a lot of memories back in the day before we had any money in debt. Uh, State Park, we would come here, it was cheap, and you see the beautiful <laughs> nature. Yes. and just spend some time with our family and the Lord trying to figure life out. And so yeah, it's, yes. a, it's a great place. It is. It's a place we have so many memories because even after we brought our family here, we started bringing our teams and small groups and leadership groups and uh, seeking God, praying around the fireplace, chatting, building relationships, which really is what life is about, doing life together in the kingdom of God. And through those times, the day of small beginnings, we built something with God's help. And so we wanted to share this with you today because it's a place we believe, whether you're at a small beginning or you're in a new beginning or you're looking to God for that next thing that he has for you to do, yeah. we want to share that with you mm -hmm. today. And I know, Gary, you just did a message out of your new book. I just launched a brand new book called That's The great. Power of Provision. It's the fourth in the Financial mm -hmm. Revolution series. And this book's a little different. It's a great second book if you've seen the other books but it's really i think a great That's first my favorite book. well i took time to go into detail i had mm -hmm. you know emails come in over the years and i kept those and so i answer a lot of questions on the process mm -hmm. and the how to's and some of the questions people ask a lot about the kingdom i think you'll find the the book very helpful of course and we just taught from the book chapter five just a little bit at, at uh, faith life church and I think you'll enjoy it. It'll give you a flavor of the book. And I think, why don't we just go there right now and you'll get to see for yourself. Mark chapter six, verse 35 is a story you've heard. Uh, it talks about uh, the bread multiplying. Verse 35, by this time it was late in the day. So his disciples came to him. This is a remote place, they said. It's already very late. Let's send the people away so they can go you know, buy, get some food. And he said, you give them something to eat. Great, that's good, that's good. They said to him that it would take more than half year's wage. And then he, in verse 38, says something very strange. How many loaves do you have? He asked, go and see. Now, do you think Jesus thought for a moment that there was enough bread there to feed those 5,000 men, children and women, probably 15 to 20,000 people? Do you think he was asking them to go verify if they had enough food to feed all those people? Help me out. No, that wasn't his intent. He was looking for the exact seed that needed to be sown for an exact harvest. So Jesus, how many loaves do you have? So we analyze why did he do that? We now realize they changed kingdoms. He blessed it. They changed jurisdiction. The kingdom of heaven could multiply the bread. Previous, it could not because that bread was legally within the hands of, of men God had no legal jurisdiction to multiply it until they gave it to him willingly. All right, so verse 39, then Jesus directed them to sit down in groups. They sat down in hundreds and fifties, taking the five loaves, the two fish, looking up to heaven. He gave thanks. Some versions say he blessed it and broke the loaves. Then he gave it to his disciples and they divided it. They all ate and were satisfied and 12 baskets left over. I mean, how many would agree, you know, I could use some of that kind of help, right? The kingdom, right? So we need to talk about that. Blessed means to separate or consecrate. And he gave thanks. That Greek word means thanks or to, to consecrate, to bless. And if Jesus gave thanks, what is he thanking God for? Hello. What is he thanking God for? Oh, well, we got to talk about that. Philippians 4, 6, be anxious for nothing but in everything through prayer and petition. Let your requests be known to God with thanksgiving. thanksgiving. And then the peace of God will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. What are you thanking God for? See, the prayer is the vehicle that carries the petition. The petition is very specific. You are thanking God, Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore, when I pray, I believe that I receive and I shall have it. You are thanking God that you received the petition. So what is he thanking God for? What is Jesus giving thanks for? He receives the petition. He already had a clear definition. See, he already had them sitting in groups. He already knew what was going to take place, what was going to take place when he thanked God that it was going to take place because he already had them sitting in groups. He already had the plan 
So I believe that this is what happened. It wasn't just, thank you, God. He actually gave a directive. Let me, before I go there, let me bring up a different scripture. Matthew chapter 8, 28. This is the story of the Gadarians, the two demons, filled men. And verse 28 of chapter 8 of Matthew, that when Jesus came, they were so violent that no one could pass that way. What do you want with us, son of God? They shouted. Who's they? The demons. Have you come here to torture us before the appointed time? Now, of course, there's a large herd of pigs there. And if you drive us out, let us go into those, those pigs. And Jesus said what? Go. Now, Jesus is carrying on a conversation with these demons. And they're talking like just, they're talking. Why weren't they taken off? Why were they carrying on a conversation with Jesus? They didn't have to go. That's why. They legally had a right to be there until Jesus said, go. All right. So going back to that prayer, Jesus broke the bread and he blessed it. He had to give it a directive. He had to release authority. And directives like a harvest is very specific. So I, I don't believe he just said, hey, you know, thanks. I believe he said, Father, something, Father, I thank you this bread multiplies to feed this multitude. I thank you this bread multiplies now to feed this multitude. See, I believe he gave it a directive. He spoke. He didn't just speak like, it's a beautiful day, God. It's awesome to have a, have a big picnic. I believe he spoke. He gave it a directive. He already knew the harvest. He had a specific harvest. He needed bread and fish. He looked for the specific seed. He released it into the kingdom, and it multiplied. It changed kingdoms under the jurisdiction, and he released the authority after. When? After, maybe. Let me ask you. When did the fish and bread change kingdoms? Tell me exactly when. When he received it? Or when he spoke over it? Mm. You sure? Positive? I believe you're right. When he, he spoke over it. See, Romans 10, 10 is the scripture. You need to understand how this thing works. For it's with the heart you believe and are justified, meaning that your heart believes the word, and now it's legal for heaven to invade earth. But that's not the end of the sentence. Then it says you confess or profess your faith unto salvation. See, because you have jurisdiction in the earth realm, it's legal for heaven to invade earth, but it can't. When you're in faith, it's legal. You qualify, but until you release it, it can't come. Justified is a legal term, meaning administration of law. So you believe in your heart, and it's legally legal for heaven to invade earth through your life, but until you speak, until you act on it, as if it's as nothing happens, okay? So Jesus spoke. He gave it a directive, and it, the transfer took place when Jesus spoke. Now, again, all the stories that I tell in church, you, if you know them, are always very specific. Like the, the duck hunting gun, you've heard many times. Went and spoke at a, a, a corporate conference. But before that, I had heard about, you know, I've, I've given 25, 30 guns away. I'm not, I had a shotgun. I used it for everything. But I heard about this duck hunting gun that was camouflaged, big magnum shells. I remember I had missed a couple geese. They were pretty high. I couldn't get that high. I thought these big magnum, these duck guns, they're designed to go a little farther out. I, I might need to get one. Now, this is January, and season's not open for another few, you know, months. But I was walking through Cabela's, and I, sure enough, they had a whole rack of waterfowl guns. And I remember, without even thinking about it, I walked by, looked at it, and I said, Lord, I'll take that one. Never thought a thing about it. A couple weeks later, maybe it was a month after that, I went to this corporate event. The, the CEO comes out. We wanted to give you a gift for speaking, and he brought out that exact shotgun, the exact model, the exact shotgun. Now, see you, I hear that record scratch right now. Stop everything. Because you need to ask how it happened. All my story, you know Kirsten's dog, remember the Pomeranian? How did it show up? 
How are these things always showing up exactly? Detailed, specific. If, you, if you're new here, it's all in my books. I mean, stories upon stories, exactly. How about Drenda winning that big halibut derby? She's not a professional fisherman. <laughs> she walked in that place. I mean, you got all kinds of people fishing in Alaska for that, to win that derby. She walks in and says, I'm going to catch the winning derby today. The big fish. Right. Every tourist says that. But she caught it. Her picture was in the paper. She got the check. See, someone needs to ask, how did she know that she was going to catch it? Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.